Real Life Street Stars. We're here with Ice Jizzle, what it is. What's him? What's him? Man, for all these niggas ain't knowing deaf, dumb, stupid man living up under a rock, man. Tell these niggas where you from. Man, I'm a late Texas nigga, you know what I mean? Louisiana, Texas. You know what I'm saying? That's the both worlds. And you know, before we get into you know what you're doing right now, what you got coming up, man, just give us a little brief background on you, man. Some a little bit about your upbringing, and you know how you got to the music. Raised in Chopper City, you know, born in Magtown, McKinney, you know. So uh, I bounced back and forth, did a lot, seen a lot, got in a lot of trouble, you know, very troubled team. Went to the pen a couple of times, just got through doing some fed time. So, you know, I'm out here. By the way, my paperwork's straight. Anybody won't see it, you know? So, uh, and I just write, you know? My passion is writing poetry, writing movie scripts, uh, cartoons. I write everything, you know? But my passion is writing lyrics. Now, one thing about Louisiana I always respected is, like, they always seem to stay true to their sound. You know what I'm saying? They don't waver. Nigga, from when I grew up to now, it's like, you gonna have that bounce, you know what I'm saying? Um, in Texas, you know, from the, the screwed up, you know, it's like we have our styles out here from Texas to Louisiana. What do you gravitate to when you're making your music? Man, I guess I'm like an emotional creature, you know, because it's like, um, you never know how you gonna catch me one day. I might come in the day and stuff, I might be on some Chopper City shit, you know, and the next day I might be screwed up. You know, you know, I love both of them. So, you know, my style is kind of different. So it's it's never one day you're gonna catch me the same, you know. So I know you did say that you spent some time away. How how long did you spend some time away again? Yeah, I just did ten years in the field. Ten years, okay. How how would you say the music scene is different now than than then? Man, it's totally different. I mean, totally different. Like Back before I went in, you know, everybody was lyrical. You know, not like New York lyrical, but everybody had their sound, they had their style. And everybody's told stories like Scarface, uh, you know, uh, man, everybody, everybody did their thing, you know? Everybody did their thing. Everybody did it differently and stuff, but you, you grew up knowing how to move by the music. So now the music is, it's kind of, it got to come back. It got to come back to where it originated at, you know, because it has no direction, you know. So what is your plans to contribute to bringing the music back to what it was when it was in its former glory? Oh, man, I, I plan to tell stories, paint pictures the way they're supposed to be painted, you know. You know, you got a lot of artists and stuff that write fire hooks, but lyrics don't match you know so that's another thing that needs to be like they need to step on that you know they need to step on that there yeah who, who are some artists that you can feel like are still keeping it true to lyricism and that storytelling that you were used to when you went in um, let me see um It's kind of hard, it's kind of hard, man, it's kind of hard. You know, you still got some past artists that's still out here making a difference, but a lot of them are kind of fading out, but it's rotating. I heard Eminem say it one day that hip hop was doing a three, 360. You know, it's gonna come back to realism instead of talkism, you know? So, and it's getting back to that point. You hearing more and more people coming out telling stories and you know, saying what matters, like Mo3, you know, speaking in mind and stuff like that, not scared, you know, the pockets and stuff, you know. Now, let me ask you this, because um, I always wanted this. People always said, we don't respect rappers that don't live what they talk about, right? But now right. you can clearly see these niggas is living what they talking about, you know right. what I'm saying? Do you think that from NWA to Pac that they, it's kind of from that era that it's gotten to this point because when you look at some of the imagery they put out there, it was most it was gangster shit. Most but definitely. But now right. these young niggas is like they taking yeah. it to that level for real. So yeah. do we put any blame on maybe some of the old school music or like what yeah. is your take on it? Yeah, we 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 to blame. 
we to blame, you know, because even in the Bible, it tells you that music calms the savage beast or it can wake it up. So with that being said, you know, we done a lot of beast waking. We done a lot of beast waking. And the cast is out here doing the music right now. They were ready to gain stripes than to gain the paycheck. You know what I'm saying? Back then, it was just like, I lied just to get the paycheck and then pretend like I'm this, that, and the third, and then get exposed later. I don't care. Now it's like, nah. <laughs> right. Put that iron on you. You know, <laughs> put that iron on you. Yeah. For real. Would, you know? it, would you say it was some people um, that you kind of mo- that motivated you to really get into the music industry now that you're really, you know what I'm saying, you out now, you have all this time. I'm sure you wrote a lot of songs. A lot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I have a lot of music. Yeah. yeah. Would you say what really motivated you while you was in there every time you wrote? I would say... Like, people don't see every walk of life until you go to prison. You know, you hear about it, but you never see it up close until you have to sell up with them. Until you have to, they have to be your neighbor for the next five, ten years. You know, and then you see who was really out there faking, and who was really out there doing it. You know, because people talk this, that, and the earth, but the paperwork gonna tell it all. It's almost like your street resume. You know what I'm saying? That's your street resume right there. So you can say I did this, that, and the third, but if the paperwork don't tell it, you're telling a lie. You know? And then there's always somebody. My grandmother used to always tell me, two mountains will never meet, but two people will. So if you ever did something that you weren't supposed to do or said something that wasn't true, somebody eventually going to walk up on you and expose you. What was the first thing you did when you touched down? Man, I went to Chick-fil-A, bro. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds about, that sounds about, what is your, what is your favorite dipping sauce? (laughs) And I went to Chick-fil-A, I mean, I I sit up in there probably three hours. I probably scared them people, you know, but. I was hungry, oh, sitting in the white beater and stuff, just looking hungry, oh, you know? Oh, yeah. Man. But after that, man, I just, you know, I really, literally, I kissed the ground because I didn't think I was going to make it out of there. You know, everybody talk about club fed this, club fed this. You don't want that action unless you go into a camp or a medium, you know what I'm saying? Or a low. You go anywhere higher than that because there's levels to this shit. There's levels to it. So once you get to uh, the penitentiary or the school program or anything like that, oh, you in trouble. You better have your shit together. And everybody, you have to be in a car in order to make it out there. There's no such thing as I'm by myself. I'm riding with these nuts. No, you're not. No, you're not. If you come from Texas, you're going to ride with Texas. Now, I want you to keep it a bean, right? When you, when you went in, did you have like a, a girlfriend or situation? Yeah, I did. Like, I was is, married, actually. The, so what is the protocol? Well, you was married, so that's a little different. But let's just say you had a girlfriend. What is the protocol when you get locked up and you know you finna do some time time? Is it like you just got to let it go? Is it you got to hold me down? Like, Man, we have this thing we call a uh, lie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to lie to try to hold that string, hold that one piece of thread together that you got left and hope that it ride with you. But keep it real, like if she's there for like a year plus, you you like looking at your dick like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's me. You already know. <laughs> yeah. You already know. You already know. But man, it, it, it's just not like that. It's just, most people, they don't, they don't stay down these days. You know? Mm-hmm. Life goes on. And for sure. Time for sure. is 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 time is of the effort essence. It really is. Right. You know? And you got a good woman, but you can't expect a good woman to stay in a pile of shit that you made. Mm. Amen. Amen. Um, no, I'm sorry. I <laughs> <laughs> How long? 
said how long, she said no. That's a, oh, that's a long, I can barely do long distance, y'all. Y'all asking me these type of questions. I, I guess it depends on how I feel about the person, for real. I, oh, it's big, spectacular, niggas going crazy. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to, we, I'm going to have to have visits, okay? Every day. <laughs> Every damn day since he in there. <laughs> but my question to you is also, I don't know um, if you stated that you um, did music before you went in, did you? Yeah, I was I was doing music before I went in, but I was one of those who was living what I was talking about. So okay. it was very short lived. Oh, you know, okay. Okay, that makes I sense. I wasn't then. a studio gangster, so majority of what I was talking about kept me going to jail back and right. forth. Right. You know? Yeah. So how have you ever been tried just by has your gangster ever been tried since you've been out? Since I've been out this time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nah, they like, let's not mess with him. He stood at Chick-fil-A for three hours. Hell no, nah, nobody better mess with him. I ain't gonna lie, you, you don't look like a nigga to be played with. <laughs> nah. Nigga, but, 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 but keep it real, keep it real. These, you, these new young niggas, though. I don't know. These, these, yeah. new, uh, these little well, niggas is crazy. Man, you, you know, and these young niggas be taking penitentiary chances, man. So it takes for a man who be in there. What, like, for those that ain't never even seen a jail cell, you know, in his life, Going, going for that long sit down, like what is either one thing that somebody may not know is, like, is what's up in there, like as far as, you know, it, it, it's really here. I'm glad you said that because what they need to know is in the book of gangsterism, they tow out like 17 pages that they never let you read. You know, you see the glitter, the diamonds, the gold, you see the holes, you see all that. And then you feel like, yeah, I'm a man if I take that lick and all this here. But once you get up in there, it's a whole different ball game, man. It's a whole different ball game. You know what I'm saying? You're lonely. You know what I'm saying? You lose family. You find out who your family and friends really is. When the letters stop coming, they don't pick up the phone. You know what I'm saying? You got this gay ass nigga looking at you sideways. You know what I'm saying? It's ain't nobody gonna help you but you. How, how many real partners would you say you could probably would you say you had in while you were sitting down, like real partners that was in there with you that you that you got that you had a bond with, you know, while you was in there, if any? Maybe three, maybe three, you know. And in the feds, you gonna bounce, you gonna bounce, you know what I'm saying? Because if you gotta put in work and stand somebody and do something, you get shipped either to the smooth or you going to another state, you know what I'm saying? So I ended up going to Coleman, Florida, you know, after I put my work in and stayed out there. You know, and I met some real dudes out there, but then you're going to find fake anywhere you go. You know what I'm saying? It's now keep, the same game. Now, keep it real. Let's say, you know, Donald Trump was like, man, it's a real nigga in prison. Let me get ice jizzle out this hoe. You know what I'm saying? He parted you. Boom. Would you get up there and do the, you know, they was killing Kanye and Kodak for going up there and, and taking a picture. Would you take the picture with him? <laughs> Fuck no. Oh, the nigga got you. Oh, no. <laughs> now, you think Trump is worse than Biden? That's a demon, you know. That is a demon. Now, off the rip, uh, I, I say there's so much talent, you know, that's locked up in the pit uh, to the point where I feel like either publishing companies, record companies should be able to allow, you know, felons or whoever to be able to still create and still own it. Even if they don't own it while they're in there, at least if they get out the rights of whatever they wrote in there could come back to them. Now, of course you wrote volume one, and you said you have five, five volumes in total as far as just your just story. Just that one. Just yeah. that one. Mm -hmm. You wrote 65 novels is, is, is off the rip and nine movies yeah. and also started a cartoon. Right. God damn. God damn. I After mean, a while you get tired of stabbing niggas, bro. It, it get old. There and you then go. When you get locked up, you doing thirties. You doing thirties and sixties and nineties. I mean, one year we stayed locked down for damn near six months because as soon as they opened the doors and stuff, they went to stabbing each other again. So it's damn. Go back to yourself. No food. No commissary. No no phone. No nothing. I stood in line for almost thirty minutes and didn't get to use the damn phone. I was so pissed off. I wanted to stab somebody. And it wasn't even my beef. Damn. <laughs> now that's real. Now that's real, nigga. I mean, you because you get frustrated with the next man from taking. Not only have y'all the man took my freedom, but now you you fuck with my freedom in here. Right. So that's the situation right there. Situation. Um. So do you have a rollout plan as far as not only the music, 
but as far as with the the movies, um, the novels, do you have a rollout plan? I know you hit the ground running. Yep. Okay, bet. Tell us about the rollout plan as far as, you know, it's 2021. COVID, you know, is, is calming down a little bit. Everybody's getting back outside and, uh, you know, the creators are coming back. So as far as your rollout plan with the music, the novels, and, if, and if hopefully the movies, what's your, what's your plan? My plan is to bring pretty much everything I do. There you you go. know, uh, I kind of like, if you ever pay attention to Marvel, and what they're doing right now, okay. they are never run out of content because they have so many different characters and they separate them and then they all come together. There you go. You know what I'm saying? So I'm pretty much done copied that blueprint and I'm doing the same thing. That's dope. That's dope. Create create a world in which once once you got once you got an audience, you hold on to them. Now, what you doing? You have your your feet and hands and everything, man. Um, what is one of your passions as far as which one are you most passionate about? Is it the uh, the script writing? Is it the the autobiography? Is it the music in itself? Like, which one do you really just have a passion for that you? Didn't I would know say yet? the script writing because I could fall into a world by myself and do me without being judged. You know what I'm saying? I could be every character if I want to. I remember being in the cell doing the lockdown of my celly up there, looking at me crazy because I'm acting out two and three scenes down on the ground looking crazy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I didn't give a damn, you know what I'm saying? I was her, I was him, I was, you know, As and right. then I would write, you know, and he'd be looking down like, man, somebody pressed the button on this nigga. Damn. Man, you know, a- but then after I got through with it and then I threw it up there and let him read it, then he'd be like, oh, you gotta finish that. Oh, you gotta finish that shit. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, he, he a critic. Yeah. <laughs> he a critic now. Yeah. Man, so let's say, uh, Zane hit you up and said, "Hey, uh, uh, Jizzle, we need a we need a chronicle from you. We need one of them Zane Chronicles. Okay. What story would you hit him with as far as just uh, uh, Louisiana animals? Okay, 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 going down down in the down in the bio, <laughs> down yeah. in the bio. <laughs> yeah, I got some stories to tell. I've seen some stuff. So you know, I used to I used to pass around some of my scripts all over the prison and let people check it out. You know what I'm saying? And when you bored, that's what we do. So we will shoot a line." A fishing line and stuff, because you in the cell, he in the cell. We locked down for the next 60 days. People bored. And sometimes the mail don't come to two, three weeks. You know what I'm saying? You stuck. So you ain't got no books. You done order them, this and that. So they like, GZ, GZ, man, I know you're a suit. Man, shoot something over here. Shoot me a suit. There you go. Shit. You know, and they'll shoot the soup on the line. I shoot the script out there. How, how cold were you with, with, with the fishing line? Honest. <laughs> As long as it's on the same floor, I'm cool. But you yeah. got some dudes up in there shoot that bitch up, and that bitch go all the way upstairs. You fucking serious? I'm dead serious. Nigga, what? Yeah, for real. Bro, that takes some skill. Them just they, 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 them some lifers. And I'm talking about they shooting out a whole bag of hot water up under the door, up that way. How do we just looking like? The nigga, fuck. Yeah. Hey, that's a talent. I'm about to, I'm about to peep game one. I'm about to peep game. Now. Now uh, you know I had the I had the uh, the pleasure of shooting one of your videos uh, as of yesterday. You know you you, nah, you linked up, that, yeah. Man. Not that much. Was, that was a fly moment, man. Yeah, that, that was a look. Day. That was a look. Um, you linked up with the R and B teddy bear, man. Our, our partner yeah. uh, Javon, man. Um, how how is that as far as mixing that gangster style with you know getting R and B into the mix? Well, that's pretty much how me and him met because I do R and B also. Oh, dope. but I just never let that cat out of the bag. You know what I'm saying? I was doing hooks for other people, you know what I'm saying? And just selling it to him and just walking away from it and stuff. And he was like, what you doing? Then when he seen me rapping and it was just like, we started vibing and stuff. He's like, oh, okay. You know, you, you want to keep that to yourself? I'm like, yeah, I appreciate that. And we we just clicked. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there we you just go. Clicked. And you also linked up with one of the, you know, I don't know if we've spoken this earlier, but uh, linked, up, linked up with, uh, Lopez, George Lopez. Yeah, George Lopez. Yeah. Um, you know, he himself is a pioneer in the city. Uh, you know, then <clears throat> T-Town music, you know, it's a staple. DSR, staple. You know, how is it linking up with pioneers in the city that, you know, you've been knowing, been doing music for 20, 30 years? Man, I appreciate him. I really do, because he pretty much walked me into the game. That's how much belief he has in me. There you, you go. You know, so I'm forever in this debt for this. There you go, there you go. Now I got I got to ask you uh, an off the wall subject, man. You seen the movie Baby Boy? Yeah. 
All right, bro. When Jody went over old girl house, bro. And she, my car, and, ain't you? It, hey, no, 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 not that part. When she attempted to like, you know, go down and give him that uh, good old fellatio. <laughs> when Pandora tried to go down and, and he, you know, for like good, well, good eight, good eight seconds, five seconds, he like, nah, man. We, did he cheat? Was that considered cheating? Yeah, ain't cheating. Damn, bro, he supposed to be on the side of the table. <laughs> Keep, keep it real, man. How hard is it for a nigga not to cheat, man? It's hard. It's hard. It's very hard. This is very hard. Now, look, you 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 from Louisiana. Yeah. All right. So I don't know if you are familiar that uh, Webby's 16-year-old son, Trey Savage, says you should stop rapping after 30 years old. Do you think that's valid? Do you think that's a valid point? How do you feel about on that? I don't think it's a valid point at all until he up in them shoes, you know, because look at Snoop. Snoop, how old? And he's still rapping, you know? And I understand he came in the game as a youngster or whatever and stuff, but I don't feel that age has a relevancy on skill, you know? Because I have met some older guys in, in, in prison that'll blow your damn mind, but they got life. They'll never get out. Never get out. But these are some of the most tam- talented people you'll ever meet in your life. They will make the baby right now on the freestyle look stupid. So I don't, I don't, I don't feel that's an accurate statement. So what do you think you know, the, the divide is between like younger artists, they get in the game, they just kind of be super disrespectful versus, you know, the OGs, you know what I mean? Because they can't compete. That's why they do that. Right. They can't compete. You want an early strike instead of taking the time to do what it is you need to do to earn that strike. So you lash out. That's really, I mean, I think even, uh, I think it's Scarface. He's doing a farewell tour right now. Like, hey, I'm done rapping. Should should rappers have an end game as far as like, hey, I'm done after this? Or it's one of those things that even if I'm 80, if I could talk, I could rap, I could record. Good, that, that's a tough one. That's a tough I'm saying, one. Because this, hey, hip hop is new. And since, you know, early 70s, I mean, late 70s, early 80s, we're just not getting to that point where we have to ask these kind of questions. Yeah, I think it is a, 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 a a stopping point where you should, you know. But for me, it's different because I do R and B. I do everything. Oh, yeah, I, you're a writer. I mean, you're, yeah. you, so, man, you're a man of many hats. So therefore, yeah. you're in the business. Yeah. When it comes to being the artist, again, because I don't have to rap or sing. I don't have to do anything. I can just yeah. sit back and write. You know, for, for anybody. Could you see yourself, 80 years old, still on tour? Like, just say, fuck it, let's, let's go. No. Damn, yeah, no. nah, we, yeah, I'm gonna sit no. my ass down. Yeah, no, y'all come see me. <laughs> nah, for real, for real, man. Um, you have so much knowledge. I just want to make sure you, uh, you know, pass on some of that to the younger generation. As far as those who are just like you, but yet younger, have the whole world in front of them. Um, let's say they might have their foot in the streets. Let's say they might be in college and book smarts. What advice can you give them as far as just what you learn with your skill sets? as far as what they could do going forward to, you know, make sure that they, you know, get to this bag. Be true to yourself. Yeah. A lot of us become things because we want to please other people. And you shouldn't do that. You know, be yourself, even if it's a nerd. You know, if you got a certain skill set, hey, say, just be honest with yourself in the public and say, hey, Really, I'm a nerd at heart, but I can do this rap shit. It's easy. You know what I'm saying? That's just yeah. like Wayne. Wayne ain't no gangster. You know what I'm saying? Wayne, Wayne come from a sheltered life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he seen all there is to see, but at the same time, there was no bloods and crips in New Orleans. I'd be the first one to tell you that. We banged by wards. You might see me with a pink band down on this one and a green one on this one, but you better not run up on me. Straight up, you know what I'm saying? But after a while, when people, society starts talking about you and they no longer care about the bag you got, we start getting insecure about ourselves. Mm -hmm. So now we got to do something 
to get our street status back. But you never lost it. You just listened to what the streets say. That's real. Now that's real game as far as just being yourself, man. Um, I don't know if uh, Takashi should have heard that, you know, but you know, <laughs> he definitely should have heard it. What's your what's your what's your, what's your thoughts on Takashi, man? This... Yeah, for we don't, I want I want to ask about Takashi. Now I want to talk talk about Alpo because because it, it show it shows something that you know snitching snitching can't probably go without it's, 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 it's repercussions. Yeah, it, it, that's and that's the truth. So and that's the truth. But it's not just the snitching. So let's walk it down like this. Anything you have ever done in your lifetime, when they said it's a common rule, what goes around in the dark will come up to the light. Yeah. And once that light's exposed, there is no hiding from it. Everybody know the truth now. Yeah. So if I was out here in the streets and I whacked your nephew or I whacked your dad, well, guess what? I go do my 20 years for that. And when I come out, my kids is grown. He's still thinking about that. I might have changed my life and became a Christian. But his son ain't trying to hear that shit. Nigga, you killed my dad. So guess what? I've been waiting all these years to punish your ass. That's right. And that's the way it is. For us to do things like that, of that nature, whether it's snitching, killing somebody, robbing somebody and shit, people, who you, whoever you've done something to, they never forget it. And even if they're not able to avenge the situation, they got people that will. So for my dudes that's still locked up in the feds and the pin straight, hey, bro, when you get out, it's not being no coward, man. Take your ass somewhere else. Because if you go home, you're not going to last long. You know how many dudes I know that while I was in there, you get a letter two weeks later and stuff talking about such and such got killed, such and such got killed. He just went home. Yeah. But there was way down. That's real. Man, so... Ice, um, for those that do want to get at you, man, go ahead and drop your IG, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can catch me on IG, man, at Ice Jizzle. I-C-E-G-I-Z-Z-L-E. Definitely, man. He got a video dropping on our channel very soon, man. Y'all make sure y'all check that out, man. We sitting right here. Ice Jizzle. You are a real life street star, man. We salute you, man. Man, solid. Solid one right there, huh? Shout out to Real Street Stars, nigga. Moolah.